Hey, welcome back to another video for our information security class. We're trying to make this uh, login process work. In the last video, we set a session variable to the username and the user ID. So what I'd like to do now is add the ability to hide certain features from not logged in users. For instance, let's go to this original page, the index. So if somebody attempts to add a joke, wouldn't it be nice that we could uh, prevent them from actually doing that unless they had a user ID. So let's try to use the session variables to guard this uh, process right now. So back in my code, I'm going to the add joke screen here. So add joke just takes the new joke and answer and adds it to the database. We'll fix some database issues in a future video, but for right now, I want to prevent any unauthorized user from accessing this page. So let's go to the top and we're going to use the session variable from our previous code. Let's take a look here at the uh, login form and we'll notice here that we had sessions of username and user ID set. So we're going to use this uh, knowledge now on add jokes. So at the beginning of add jokes I'm going to type in session start. So session start is necessary if you are going to access the session variable in any way. All right, so now I want to check to see if this user is authorized to add a joke. If they are not authorized, then we're going to print a message that says only authorized users can log in or can, can add a joke. So we need to change the uh, actual statement up here to say if not session variable. And then after this, we're going to have an exit. So this should prevent any non-user, non-logged in user from working here. And the exit will kill the page and it won't show anymore. So let's save here. Now I'm going to go back and make sure that I'm not logged in. So this says the session variable is set to empty. So there is no session variable. Let's go back and try to add a joke now. So back to here. My new joke is one, two, three, and A, B, C, or some letters, and click OK. Now I get the message that says only logged in users may access this page. Click here to log in. I'm going to put in a real username and password. And now I have a username. And let's uh, back up here and try it again. So now I'm going to add the joke. And it does see we have an issue that says we are trying to add a new joke and user ID does not have a default value. So we're getting closer. It's at least now protecting this page from someone that is not logged in. However, the database has an issue. All right, let's return to add joke. So it's saying that we have a problem with inserting a joke into the table. The reason why this error occurs is because we've changed the table since the uh, original design of the program. So we are trying to insert into the jokes table and we have three columns. Let's take a look at the jokes table. I think it has four. So if I look in my jokes table, I should browse and see that it is expecting a user's ID. So it's either two or one based on the database that I've created. So this is a required field. Since it's a required field, let's add it here. So that is called users underscore ID. And we need a value for it. So that is also from the session variable. So session and we stored it as user ID, I believe. Let me check that for sure. So let's go back into here, go back to my login page. Where was my login page? There it is. And it was user ID. This is the actual user ID I'm looking for. And I spelled it user ID. All right, so I'm looking back at the code though in the SQL statement. And it's not liking it that I'm putting in extra quotations inside of quotations. So let's delete that and make it into a variable. Let's call it up here, user ID, and we're going to get it from the session variable. So it's just a matter of quotation marks inside the SQL statement. All right, so we can store user ID like this. And then when we try to insert it into our database, let's put in a quotations and user ID like that. Okay, we save it now and all the syntax errors go away. I'm going to try and try, uh, put a new joke in now. So let's switch back and let's go to the jokes add page. So new joke. 
let's call this thing 999 and ZZZ. And it says it tried to add it and it was submitted by user number one. That looks successful. And let's check the database. I'm gonna refresh the browse. And sure enough, we have joke number nine. It looks like it's working. User ID was Shad, so that's the correct user ID. So now that we have a uh, user's ID being printed for uh, show all jokes, let's do the exact same process when we come over to the part that says search keyword. So search keyword is very similar to search all jokes. The only difference is that the SQL statement has this part in it that says, I only want to show the jokes that have a keyword like the keyword. So the previous one shows every joke. But what I would like to do is add the user ID after the joke answer. So let's copy some code from search all jokes where it says submitted by the joke uh, by the user number. There we go. So I want to copy that part. So control C and let's go into search all jokes. And down here at the bottom again, let's paste. And it looks like I have a double period, so I want to delete one. So this should say uh, the joke answer is submitted by user number. Now remember, since we are looking for a column named user's ID, we have to also include that in here line 25, which is our select statement. So let's try user's ID, so save that. So let's go to our jokes main page here, and I'm gonna search for the word chicken, and do a search, and sure enough, it shows me the joke question, and now it says to get to the other sum side, submitted by user number one, and then it says submitted by user number one. So the only thing I would maybe think would be different is to maybe put a double hyphen in a capital letter. Let's save that and let's refresh the page. So that looks a little bit more readable. And so now we have ourselves the ID number of the, the person that was uh, the joke author. So in a future video, we're going to actually change this from the uh, user number into the user name, but that might involve some extra work.
Okay, since we're adding a joke and displaying all the jokes, let's take a look at the file called search all jokes. So recently we updated the table for the users and we would like to also select the uh, username. So recently we added a new uh, field to the uh, tables. So recently we added a new column to the jokes table. It was the user as ID. And so in this uh, file here called search all jokes, we can add that new feature. So in the original SQL statement that I had created was to search for three different column names, the joke ID, the joke question, and the joke answer. Well, the joke table now has another uh, column. Let's take a look at that column. So the jokes table has a new column at the very right side called users underscore ID. And you can see that it has the ID number of each person that created the joke. So let's include that when we display our jokes. So in the uh, line 18 where we're doing the select statement, I'm going to put in the capital users underscore ID from the jokes table. So now when we do the search results, we can say that this uh, joke question was here and the joke answer is printed. And just before the end of the uh, line, we're gonna put in the user ID. All right, so make sure that you get all the periods and the quotation marks correct. But we are searching for row, uh, in the row, we're gonna search for the uh, column name user underscore ID. Let's double check to make sure I spelled that right. I think it's supposed to be users. So just to make sure that this is right, I'm gonna switch back into my database. It is users with a under uh, lowercase u. So let's fix that error before it occurs. So under, under uh, uh, so that is a uh, lowercase u. All right, let's save that. Now we're gonna we're gonna go back and try to add a new joke. So my new joke is um, All right, so let's put a new joke in our database. Uh, let's try a duck joke. It says, what did the duck say when he purchased new lipstick? And of course he said, put that on my bill. Let's see what happens when I click OK. It says, only logged in users. All right, let's try to add a joke here. And of course he says, uh, so let's do a duck joke. It says, uh, what did the duck say when he purchased new lipstick? And the answer is, uh, put that on my bill. All right, let's see what happens when I click OK. So now when we get a uh, research result for all, all jokes, we get the uh, joke at the end here that says uh, submitted by user number one. And you can see that all of the username numbers are now listed after the jokes.